So now we're going to switch gears. We're going to move on to the DSCC candidates. The DSCC seats have an A and a B component. There are two components. So let me try to explain this the best way as it is put here on this piece of paper for me to explain it to you. The A seat is filled by female candidates. The A seat. So when you see DSCC and it's A, it is a female candidate that fills that seat. The B seat is filled by a male candidate. Remember that we're starting with the uh, opposed races. So we're going to start off with DSCC District 44A. Let me say that again. DSCC District 44A. It's got a nice little flow to it. I like that. Um, the, the two individuals who are running for the A seat is Ms. Marjorie Broussard and Ms. Peyton Rose Michelle. Uh, who we have here is Peyton Rose Michelle. And once again, let's welcome you back up to uh, have a word. Thank you so much for having me back. Okay, it's good to have you back. <laughs> Guess who's back? <laughs> All right, your two minutes starts now. Well, again, my name is Peyton Rose Michelle. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a longtime advocate and current member of the DSCC. Um, actually, in 2020, when I was elected to the DSCC, I became the first openly transgender person elected in the state of Louisiana. And, you know, that changed my world, honestly. So I think, you know, it, it, it's only been important to me that I just continue that journey. Um, in my four years, I've got to see, uh, you know, s some good things and a lot of not so good things about how our party is run. And I think, you know, it, it really invigorated me to ensure that I keep up the fight. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, th there are only a couple meetings a year, and you know, I've attended almost all of them, and I've seen just some chaos ensue. I guess is the nice way to put it. So. You know, I, I'm not afraid to be there. I'm not afraid to be in chaos, be on the front lines, do what you gotta do, um, and vote, you know? That's, a, as a member of these committees, our jobs are to vote for, you know, whatever various issues come up to us, and I am proud to do that, you know, on whatever comes up. Okay. Well, thank you. I'll give a round of applause. Peyton, Rose, Michelle. Peyton, I'm not going to ask you the same question I've already asked you once before. So we will move on to the next seat, which is the 44B seat. Thank you again thank you so much. For, for your time and for your offering yourself up to service. So in DSCC, District 44, the B seat, it is Kelvin, uh, Kevin Dalcourt and Joshua Edmonds. Uh, I will first bring up Mr. Kevin Dalcourt. I hope I'm saying that correctly. That's correct. So, Mr. Kevin, sit down and have a seat. Make yourself at home. Your two minutes starts right now. My name is Kevin Dalcourt. Uh, I'm 56 years old. I've been married for 29 and a half years. Uh, do have a, a son named Kevin Dalcourt. Junior, um, I've been a businessman in this community for over uh, 17 years. Um, also, I am the executive director of Justice Reform Initiative, where we do expungements, where we can help community members expunge criminal records, where they can get better job education and also housing. Uh, the reason why I decided to uh, run was when I went. went I saw the uh, results of the election and the turnout. Um, I have to blame it squarely on the leadership of the Democratic Party. I think the Democratic Party's leadership it needs to be changed from top to bottom. Um, because what's worked, what the Democratic Party is doing now, it's, it's not working. I'll give an example. We had uh, a gubernatorial endorsed candidate Sean Wilson, who is from this city. And I speak to my community members all the time. A lot of people didn't know who he was, didn't even know what he was running for. And again, 
that's because there was no resources that was put into his, his candidacy. So as DC, as DSCC members, um, myself and there are also a hundred other progressive Democrats that are running that have the same ideas as me to uh, hold leadership accountable and to also help uh, develop a pipeline of formidable candidates so that we can not just compete in races, but win them. Um, and that's the reason why I'm, I'm running. Okay. So, of course, Mr. Dalcourt, and a round of applause for Mr. Dalcourt, please. I have been asking the same question throughout this forum. So you've heard it, and yes. so I will present that question again to you. What are you specifically planning on doing to motivate individuals to come out to vote for you and the principles and the ideas that you stand for? Well, first of all, again, as, as was uh, resonated throughout everyone's speeches, you have to get the voters excited about something. Um, we can talk about, let's say, for instance, the Super Bowl, whether you're a fan or not. Everybody know it's coming and there's, there's excitement around it. So everybody wants to be engaged. So what we have to do, uh, the Democratic State Party has to give the resources and, and we should have better outreach into the community. The candidates that we put forward, we have to educate our community members of who the candidates are so that um, they can be excited and that they would want to um, support those candidates. And then also we have to uh, bring resources. We also have to bring um, a, a coalition. And also in, in this election, uh, understand that it is a democratic primary. But at the same time, we have to reach over to the independents who can actually vote in this election. So we have to build a broad coalition, and I'm planning on trying to build a broad coalition um, to energize people uh, to vote so that we can um, have changes from top to bottom. Uh, one last thing I, I would like to mention is that with the laws that was just passed in this special session from the criminal justice reform, uh, people in this room and people at home, uh, they're coming for us. Next will be education. Next will be health care, which, which affects everything. So if we can get viable candidates for these offices, we can compete and we can win. Thank you. Round of applause. <laughs> so we have a question for Mr. Dalcourt. I, I'm going to answer your question with a question. If you're working on a job and you continually to perform poorly, what will happen? Well, I know, but I'm, I'm asking for a yes or no. If you continue to perform poorly, you will be asked for your resignation or you will be fired. So no, I will not vote for the current leadership. Is there any other questions? Another question? Go ahead, sir. Your question. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I have a question. Okay. Mr. Delcourt, if, um, if you're elected, do you plan to engage a variety of different people to get them out to vote? Not just a traditional Democrat, but I'm talking about LBGT. I'm yes. talking about young people. Yes. I'm talking about entrepreneurs. Will you engage a variety of people that we can motivate to get out and vote? The Democratic Party is a big tent, okay? And there's room for everybody. And even if, uh, again, I, as I mentioned, in this election, um, in this election, independents can also vote. So that's another thing that Democrats need to do is to try to get those independents to vote, okay? And if we, if we can do that, we can get those numbers and we can win. And we need to get viable candidates that the um, community is, is relatable to, that um, gets them excited to vote and support those candidates. Are you trying to say they can vote in the party election? Yes. They can't. The independents cannot vote in the party election. I was, Only registered Democrats can. I was, I was told by someone who works at the polls that 
as long as you, you a Republican can't, but no part if you're no party you can't, but independents can. That's inaccurate. You have to be a registered Democrat. Well, if if that's inaccurate, I, I I apologize, but that's what I was told by a poll worker. Right. In our public in our public elections, that's correct, but not for state party leadership. You have to be a registered Democrat. Okay. Well, I apologize for the inaccuracy. That's okay. Any other questions? Another question. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah, so a couple of things that you had mentioned kind of stuck out to me there. So you, uh, when, when it spoke to me when you said that they're coming for us. Yes. From a legislative standpoint, because I'm a part of a minority community that's actively and being come for by the legislators. Uh, another thing that you mentioned that didn't necessarily resonate with me well was the, the, big, the big tent thing. I feel like the, the current party chair uses that a lot. And I feel like the, the Democratic Party platform is not a big tent. It's a party platform and we should stick to it. And leadership, and I'm glad that you were asked the direct question about whether you, sure. you vote to reelect leadership because we need a new party chair. She has sat by and allowed for legislation to be co-sponsored by people in positions of power that are anti-trans. There's a black man who co-sponsors anti-trans legislation and our party chair doesn't, you know, allows this sort of thing to happen. So I'm, I guess this is more of a comment, but if you want to sort of build on that, I, I guess I'm interested in what you're gonna do actively to make sure that those sort of values on all minority communities are, are acted in that interest and not just necessarily the one that you're in a part of. You, you vote for the person who has the same ideals as you and I to lead the party. And yes, it, you may feel at this point that you, know, you may be ousted because of current leadership, but that's the problem right now, current leadership. So we have to get a candidate, right, that has the values of you and I and everybody in this room. And that's what I believe. Whether, um, whether you're, you're, you're marginalized communities, low-income communities, we all have different set of problems, but we can all coalesce around the same issue. We're all family. And if someone in leadership is not acting like the head of the family, they need to go. If there be no other questions, right, yeah. once again, round of applause, Mr. Kevin Dalcourt. Thank you. Thank you. Your next uh, candidate that will be coming up is Joshua Edmund. Welcome, Mr. Edmund. Thank you, sir. Uh, better yet, Dr. Edmund. My bad. Hold on. Your two minutes starts now. My name is Joshua Edmund, and I'm running for re-election of DSCC 44B. I'm a father of nine kids, 13 grandkids. Um, my main job is working at UL Lafayette. I'm the assistant manager of maintenance and repair, and I currently was elected for Lafayette Parish School Board District 3. My reason for running for re-election is to finish what started four years ago. Matthew, J and uh, Peyton, I want to tell you guys that I'm a parent of two LBGQ kids, and I know the struggle of them being also in that lifestyle, also being of African-American descent. So they got two strikes on them already from people that don't look like them that want to bring policies to not govern them. So I will stand tall for the, this community for that, and I also will stand tall for policies and procedures that stands in the way of people of uh, dis disserved areas or underserved areas that need to have the better representation and moving forward and working with everybody in every district and every parish and also working with our local DPEC. I think the DSCC should be working with the local DPEC, still should be attending meetings with the local DPEC as much as possible when they can. That all you have? That's all I have. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Just before your question, my question, then you go and get to answer your question. <laughs> right. So, so my question is, is simply the same question, and, and, and Mr. Edmonds, of course, the dismal numbers when it comes down to turnout for elections across the board are saddening. What are you planning on doing to energize the base and energize individuals to come out to vote for you and the ideas and the principles you stand on? I'm going to take it a little further because everything everybody said prior to me made a lot of sense. But if you go back to Gary Chambers' race, if every Democrat that was registered to vote 
would have voted for Gary Chambers, he would have went by a landslide. You do the same thing for uh, 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 Governor Candidate Sean Wilson. We had people that could have voted that didn't vote. So we need to find out why the people who's registered to vote is not voting. And then also to find out why and what we need to do to get them back engaged. And I can tell you the first thing it is, is trust. Because when I was canvassing and knocking on doors for my school board race, I knocked on the door and the guy said, why I vote? My vote don't matter because the same thing that's gonna happen four years ago is gonna happen this time around. So we gotta build up the trust and we gotta have hold these politicians accountable. Even myself gotta be held accountable, have my feet to the fire if I'm making a decision that's gonna hurt my constituents in my community. So that's okay. where I stand at with All that. Right, thank you. Do we have any questions? I know we have a question here. Yes, yes ma'am. Mr. Edmonds, last go round, you voted for your current chair, yes, I did. Katie Bernholtz. Yes, I did. And so I'm going to ask you the same question. If you're reelected, yes or no, will you vote to, to, for her to be chair again for another four years? I will not vote for leadership that did not hold the presence of a leadership. So, uh, okay. I asked about the chair. Yes, I'm talking about the chair. You will not vote for her to be reelected? I will not vote if the leadership is not what it's supposed to be for our community. I'm voting for the people. So is it? Okay, it's a yes or no, because we know Katie's running again, and you can't answer me whether you vote for her again? I after vote? The no, no. Because Gary Chambers, you just talked about, huh. she tanked Gary Chambers. I know that. She sabotaged him. She kept him from getting the endorsement he earned, huh. and she ruined any chance he had. That should be a simple yes or no. And Josh, no, she doesn't think a black man can win a statewide race. Yes, she told him, a black man can't win. She said, she told that to Sean Wilson and told him she, she said, thought she should be governor instead of Sean Wilson. Based on, I don't know what, but I, I'm, I, I'm gonna ask everybody, it's a straightforward question. We've no, I won't. failed leadership. Either you support you her, answer, she has to be yes or no. Did you what? I just answered, I said, no, I won't. Okay, well, I don't know why it was so hard. It wasn't hard, Ms. Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions for Mr. Edmund? Being none, yeah, like, I mean, oh, oh, we do. Wait a minute. So we're back. Let's start all the way from back. No, no, I was saying, I was saying okay. So your question, sir. How will you respond, and how will you, uh, how will you encourage party leadership to respond when you do have lawmakers and other members of the party that are, especially the DSCC and DSCC leadership, that are uh, backing policies that are. Uh, Well, what I would do, I would uh, hold them accountable and, and present the facts of why they're doing the wrong thing. And have and one, another thing I want to add is that we need to have more forums and town hall meetings before certain things be coming to the, to the light. So a lot of times, just like with the Paulville situation, the community didn't know anything about it till the 25th hour. And as a school board member, I told it to the superintendent as well, we should have town hall and forums. So it's the same thing, you know, something could be affecting the community. We need to bring that, bring it to them and let them know what's going on ahead of time. And that way, if they have to write the legislation, write the governor's office, they will have ample enough time to do that as well. Okay, I know we have another question, is yours, sir. Yeah. So that's the issue that I'm talking about. I understand it's a compound issue being in a, you know, intersecting with multiple minorities, but how does that feel like as a dad, and what does that inspire you in terms of a state level and being a, a part of service, you know, prompting inspirationally about why you want to do this for your kids and what you see that they're dealing with here and how you plan on fixing it? Well, it's two of my sons, and as a dad, I learned that I have to love them even harder. I got to love them even harder. When they go out, one of my sons is in the military, and I got to love when he was overseas, I couldn't sleep. I was, I was stressed, I was worried behind him and everything like that. My other son lived in St. Martinville, and when he had a, 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 a date partner that was aggressive, as a dad, you know, put politics to the side, put anything up to the side, my job as a dad is to protect first. You know, so 
I pray for them continuously. I pray for them continuously, and I tell my, I tell my sons, that just like I tell my daughters, you know, when you're out there, respect yourself, even though people may not respect you, give them something to respect. If there be no more questions, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joshua Edmonds. <laughs> So as we continue to move on, we will now go to DSCC District 45A. Uh, the two individuals who will be running is uh, Ms. Katie Birdhard and Ms. Madeline Brumley, and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correct. Uh, Kev, is it, how do you? I, I got you, it's uh, Madeline Brumley Clavier. Clavier, that's it. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, who is here and present is Ms. Clavier. So Ms. Clavier, come on up. See, I'm horrible with names. I, I pray it's, for them. Pray it's, for them. it's tough. I know, it's a French thing, and I wouldn't understand. <laughs> so, your two minutes starts now. Hi, I'm Madeline Brumley Clavier, and I'm running for Democratic State Central Committee at District 45 because our current state chair has failed the party and failed the state. Um, and it's time for a change in leadership. To give you a sense of the problem, the Democratic State Chair failed to recruit candidates in so many <coughs> legislative districts that the Republicans had a lock on the state legislative majority before a single vote was cast in 2023. And where Democrats were on the ballot, often against each other, the state party chair intervened time and time again to put her thumb on the scale in favor of the Republican-like candidates and against the candidates who are running to make real change in this state. And while the Democrats were dealing with the messy fallout of the actions and inactions of the current party chair, Jeff Landry sailed into office. And Jeff Landry has only been in office a matter of weeks, and he has already enacted incredibly harmful policies that will ensure that Louisiana children go hungry this summer, ensure that in innocent Louisianians stay locked up in jail, and the party really needs to be singularly focused on denying him a second term and the current party chair is fundamentally um, unequipped to meet the moment. Now, who am I? I'm Madeline Brumley Clavier, and I'm a Louisiana, uh, a Lafayette native, a Lafayette resident, and an attorney who spent her entire career fighting for people who are harmed by corporations who put profits over safety, including for Louisianians who were harmed by the pharmaceutical companies who created and profited off of the opioid crisis. And if elected to DSCC, I will fight for you and fight for, to reform the party. I will fight to recruit and support candidates that excite voters that we can all believe in and to mobilize and energize those voters to show up at the polls to push back against Republican support. So um, if you live in District 45 and you agree with me that the party needs to be fixed, Please make your voice heard and come out and vote for number six, Madeline Brumley Clavier for DSCC. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Ms. Clavier. So, Ms. Madeline, I've been asking the same question. Everybody seems to have their form of the same answer. It, it seems like a simple task, but for a task that's so simple, it seems to be that folk are not energized or inspired or even at the point that they want to even go out and vote uh, in any election for anything. Same question presented to everyone. What are you going to do to motivate that base to come out and vote for you and the principles and the ideas you stand for? Sure. So um, if elected to the DSCC, I would work to recruit candidates who have uh, clear policy positions and clear party values that um, uh, the voters believe in and can be excited about. I think when the party continues to run candidates where you kind of have to squint and tilt your head to the side to tell the difference between the Democrat and the Republican, people don't get off the couch and show up to vote for those candidates. And so it is important to that we, uh, and then we have to go out and support those candidates who are brave enough to run in this currently deep red state. So um, so I echo the thoughts of a lot of people who've sat up here with you today and said, we need to run candidates with clear values and clear policy positions that Democrats believe in. All right. Does anyone have, we have, 
So after the, the hand clap, uh, we have a question. Thank you for making it clear in case that was lost on anyone. I am running for DSCC against the current party chair. No, I would su not support her to run again. And my hope is that uh, the voters of District 45 will come out and set a clear example for the state party and a clear message that it is time for new leadership and new direction so we can all get focused on what we need to be focused on, which is the next election and electing Democrats up and down the ballot. Is there any other question? Question in the back, please. This is kind of a tag along question uh, to Kathy's. But whenever you are voting for a chair, um, what qualities specifically are you going to look for in our candidates? That's a great question. I think um, what's important to me in a chair is uh, somebody who is not afraid to hold Democrats accountable when they do things like vote against. Uh, or, or vote for policies that hurt the LGBT community, that hurt trans kids, that hurt black voters, um, that hurt formerly incarcerated persons, uh, who, you know, who hurt the, um, sorry, the, I don't know how I wanna say this, who, who helped put for, forward the uh, agendas of, of the sort of antagonistic folks that we see at our library boards fighting to control the kind of literature that, uh, children have access to. Um, and I want somebody who has the, the time to devote to that position. So somebody who has the time to devote to that position and the temperament to hold the powerful accountable. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Seeing that they be none. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Ms. Madeline Rumley Fabier. Thank you. You're so next we will be going to DSCC District 96A, which the two candidates are Sarah Pierre and Tony Ventroy. And we do bring up next Miss Sarah Pierre. So a round of applause for Miss Sarah Pierre. Hey, Miss Pierre, how are oh, you? Oh, well, good and you. Doing quite well. Your two minutes starts now. Okay, hi. My name is Sarah Pierre and I am hailing from the city of St. Martinville, Louisiana, but all of Acadiana is home. I've never been hesitant to be involved with any of the communities I've been a part of and that's one of the reasons why I'm running for this position. I may be young, but with my knowledge and skills that I gained through receiving my Juris Doctorate, I'm prepared and confident to advocate, represent, and amplify the district of 96A. I stand on the values of cultural competence inclusivity and amplification. And that's why I'm not only asking to be given the opportunity to fight for you, but to include you throughout and after the process. I am dedicated, committed, and passionate for not only acknowledging our past, changing our present, and preparing for our future. We should never forget the ones who paved the way before us, which is why I hope you elect me so we can continue to pave the way together. Thank you. Round of applause. So, Ms. Pierre. Yes. You've heard the question. I have. And since you have a Juris Doctrine, it's not, it, 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 you must be like, Lord, how many times yeah. are they going to cross-examine this question? But uh. the question is a serious one. <laughs> yes. Uh, because of the voter apathy that has seemed to have permeated the state. What do you plan on doing? So, like I just concluded about paving a way together, I'm going to do my best. Well, do I have two minutes to answer this question? Okay, so I'm going to do my best to be short and sweet because I can be long- um, when did, but to pave, which is purpose, advocacy, volume, and education. Um, I think every person has an individual purpose, but when you're a part of a collective whole, sometimes it's easy to try to forget like what your individual purpose is in that. And that's everyone using their voice, right? And then advocacy, we need effective advocacy within our party, within all of our districts, within every single election, whether it's from here all the way to gubernatorial and presidential. And then what I feel is one of the issues we're facing the most is volume. We have 
a stagnancy, but we need an increase in volume. We need an increase in activity within our party, um, especially within the younger generation. When you pay attention to who's always voting at the polls, you don't see people like my age, or I'm 26 years old, but again, it's a lack of education, which is next, of where people aren't aware of how they can be involved within the party. Of I wasn't aware that DPEC was even a thing, right? So it starts at the smallest level of making people understand, oh, that's my time. Oh, 30 seconds, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I said, I just think it's really important because we have had people who have paid the way for us, but when you come to a place of stagnancy and division, it's hard to find a way to unite and continue to paving. But like those four things, purpose, advocacy, volume, and education, that's how I plan to implement that if elected. Ladies and gentlemen, give your round of applause to Ms. Sarah Pierre. Ms. Pierre, I'm pretty sure we have a question because we've been having a steady question. And, I, yes. and we will have that steady question continually to be asked. Yes. So, uh, first question, we're going to take it right over here. Okay. Same question I've asked everybody else running for FCC. Um, if elected, would you vote to re elect the current chair of our state party? Yes or no? Attorney Hurst, correct? That's yeah, her. No, but no, I just no. It has anything to do with it. I'm just it's, it's I'm addressing you, no ma'am. It is to you, but I'm going to stand firm in what my answer is going to be, and that's going to be my final answer. I'm representing a district. I'm not representing one person. And if everyone has done their homework, this is my first time running for DSC, so I have not served currently on this board. But again, I'm representing an entire body. So if elected, and if this is even permitted, because I have to go back and make sure I'm following the rules, I will be automatically sending out an opportunity for people in my district to vote. Because again, offering the opportunity of a democratic process for them to choose who they would want me to voice. And that is my final answer. OK. okay. The voters don't get to vote on that. I'm aware, but I'm representing, I'm representing the voters in my district and whoever my district is choosing to support, I'm going to give them that opportunity and educate them on the options that they have and whoever they select is who I will. Okay, so the question was answered. I, I'll give a little clarity to this, hopefully, from, from a layman's, because when, when, uh, when two attorneys speak, Sometimes we get lost in translation. So let me talk like I'm the two-year-old here. So from, from the question that was asked, mm -hmm. what you're basically is saying, and I want to make sure that I'm clear with this, is that you will speak to your constituents and say, who yes. do my constituents yes. would like to have to be as the party leader of our party? And whoever they say that they would like for you to vote for, that's who you will vote for. Yes. Okay, I just want some clarity. That's all. <laughs> is there any other questions? Being none, give a round of applause, Ms. Sarah Pierre. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. As we continue to move on, we go to DSCC District uh, 96B, which the two candidates is Marlo Lewis and Panat Exadamani. Am I correct? Yes. And who we'll bring up next is Mr. Panat. Come on. <laughs> Feel like I'm a talk show host. Come on now. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Hey, and I'm excited <laughs> to have you. Panat, your time, your two minutes starts now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Panat Zanaman. I am from New Iberia, Louisiana. Um, I entered politics. I'm a um, gay Laotian refugee, immigrant, socialist, progressive. Did <laughs> um, I cover everything? Gardener, farmer, urban designer, and community advocate working in, uh, at, that's been working in Iberia Parish for the past um, over over the past decade, and um, last I, my first foray into politics was last season, uh, last fall when I ran for state senate in District Twenty Two against um, two Republicans, uh, another Democrat, and and independent. And uh, the reason that I hopped into that race was basically to uh, I didn't see anyone that really represented me, even in the Democratic, um, even with the Democratic candidate. And um, there's a lot of stories behind why, why all of that was happening, but um, and I'll go into a little bit of that later. But 
I wanted to see diverse representation in this party and wasn't seeing that. And I wasn't seeing um, even the Democratic candidate um, in that district um, stand with the national platform and, um, and wanting to protect LGBTQ rights and women's product reproductive rights. And so um, I felt that I needed to enter politics to help voice that, um, that part of, um, of, of uh, our community's values. So um, I'm here today running to, uh, for the, the DSCC seat to, um, because I saw really concerning things during that campaign from party, party leadership and a lack of support in general. I saw the party, uh, leadership, party leadership actually endorsing and supporting the more moderate uh, Republican and not even the Democrat, any of the Democratic candidates. I uh, was also told that the, okay, that's my time. All right. So, <laughs> Mr. I like to be respectful <laughs> about people's time. And, and you know what? <laughs> I appreciate that. That, yes. that shows to me a great deal with one's character. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Zadamont, and I am saying that correctly. Zadamont, that's correct. Zadamont. Yes, very okay. good. So it means to defeat evil. In hey, that, yes. I'll clap that one. So, so, Mr. Zadamont, um, and you have to excuse me because I'm asking myself, why do I have to ask this question every time? Ask and, again. No, no, and, and the reason why is it saddens me that people don't know the value of their voice through a vote that they sadly believe that their vote don't count. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I do ask the same question I've asked everyone before you. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to energize the base mm -hmm. and make people want to come out and vote for you and the ideas and the principles you stand for? Yeah, I think the same thing that I did during that, my last campaign um, to energize a group of voters that had never participated in uh, democracy, even though they've lived here and been um, citizens in this country for decades. I've had um, and that's representing the diversity of the party, talking about that, bragging about that, and bragging about all the good things that we as a party have brought to this community and to, uh, to, the, to the larger region and to the state. And so, um, you know, one, real, one great, great story was the, um, all, we, in my first campaign rally, we got 50 new um, registered voters mm. to, to sign up and they're mostly Asian immigrants um, from the Laotian community in Iberia Parish. And um, even though I lost overall in the, um, against the other Democrat in the overall district in Iberia Parish, I won by 50 votes over the, the Democrats. So that for me, you know, let's celebrate those small wins whenever right. we can. Let's talk ourselves up. Let's, talk, let's brag about things like being, um, uh, being a party that addresses climate change and um, a party that brings opportunities like the infrastructure bill on a federal level that, trickle, that trickles down to a place like New Iberia and Iberia Parish that bring, that's brought, bringing in the largest um, solar manufacturing facility in the country to, to this state and 700 drops to our area. That's something that we need to be talking about mm -hmm. every time, every chance we get, mm -hmm. talking about the good that the Democratic Party um, does for the community and get people on board with us. Okay, okay. I, kn you. I know we have some questions. Y'all can clap it up one time if you want to. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Adamon, here comes the question. Yeah. Same question. Um, if you're elected to this seat, would you vote yes or no to reelect the current party chair for another three-year term? Uh, based on my conversations with uh, that person during my campaign, and looking at the history of um, the, uh, the ineffectiveness of the leadership and uh, in achieving the ultimate goal of getting Democrats elected in this state, no, I would not vote um, for, the, the con for continued, that continued leadership. Yeah. I like this May West, uh, a May West quote. Um, when I'm confronted with two evils, I usually pick the one I haven't tried yet. So, <laughs> so let's, the point is, let's try something new. Let's try something new. Is there any other question? Being none, give a round of applause. Thank you, guys. For Mr. Tanat Zadaman. Now say that 50 times real quick and see what happens. <laughs>
So now we'll go to the uh, unopposed candidates. Uh, DSCC District 31A, uh, Miss Amy Robinson, I know you're here. Do you want to come back up and have a word? Do you need to hear anything else? You may have a question, though. Hold on. So, so, so we may not give you your two minutes if you don't want it. But I do want you to come up. And I do want to see, does anyone have a question for Miss Robinson? Miss Robinson, have a seat. Miss Robinson. Yes, And the Ms. question Hurst. comes. Next question. If you're, re well, you are re-elected, never mind. Do you plan to vote for the current chair? Yes, no. Okay. Absolutely not. And I didn't vote for her the first time. So I don't have any of that on my conscience. <laughs> okay. So do we have any more questions for Miss Robinson? Seeing that there is none, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ms. Amy Robinson. So, though some, of these <laughs> though some of these individuals are not here, I will go through the whole slate. And the ones that are here, if you do want to come up and, and have a word, we will allow you to do so. So, DSCC District 31B is Jackson Voss. I know Jackson's not here. DSCC District 39A is Amanda Anderson. Amanda, do you want to come up and have a word or? She peaced out. <laughs> no word? She didn't want to yeah. come up again. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, and since she left, she's not here, right? She's not here. Okay, so we cannot answer the question. So, uh, DSCC District 39B, there's no candidate. DSCC District 42A is Exora Proctor and DSCC District 42B is Paige Gray. Uh, DSCC 43A is Miss Catherine Hurst. Miss Hurst, come on up, give her a round of applause. And how are you doing? Oh, good, I'm, I'm gonna stand because okay. I'm short. You know? I, I'm short too, oh. I feel it. <laughs> let, me, let me be a gentleman and move this Thank chair back. Thank you. Okay. okay, so your two minutes starts now. So I, um, Again, I'm unopposed and happy to, well, I, I say again, last time I was not unopposed, but um, I ran to, again, to try and restore dem democratic values to our party and to help elect new leadership, which we are desperately in need of. If you can't tell by my question, I don't support the c current party chair She's been unresponsive to her leadership. She has violated the bylaws um, consistently. We haven't even met um, three times a year, which the bylaws require. And I am working with two different groups who are recruiting candidates and trying to help get candidates elected who will change the leadership of our party. And if you're not sure who to vote for, I suggest that you go to LouisianaBlueTeam.com and or Blue Reboot, and those two groups will tell you who they recommend to vote for to make sure that we revitalize our party and get new leadership so that we don't, look, we didn't, John Bell Edwards didn't get elected with a Democratic Party hanging out with his predecessor. We have a current party chair who went to the fundraiser for Jeff Landry in D.C. We're not, if we don't get new leadership, he will, he's guaranteed a second term. Guaranteed. So we have got to elect new leadership. And you have to hold your candidates accountable. Are they going to support this disaster we have now? Or are we going to change it? And I think we're all tired of what the circumstance that we're living in now. And I'll answer my own question. No, I will not vote for the party chair again. <laughs> and I didn't vote for her last time, just like Amy. And um, we cannot, so we can't afford another four years. Our, our party is on life support as it is. And we have got to change it. And I ask you all to get involved, get people to, out to vote, um, and get them to vote for progressive candidates. Uh, like somebody else said, no more Republican light. That's gotten us nowhere, nowhere. And thank you all for, for coming and everybody who's engaged. And if I can be of help to anybody who is running, please let me know since I'm unopposed. I'm working very hard 
for candidates literally all over the state right now for our Democratic Party leadership. Okay, so so Ms. Hurst, um, I'm going to have to because it only would be right. <laughs> Only fair. And only fair. And that's what we're only going to be, is fair. Right. So I have presented this question since the moment I got here on the podium and began to speak. Um, you know as well as I know, as well as everybody else knows, the dismal numbers of voter turnout. What are your plans to energize your base to come out and vote for you and for the values and the principles you stand for? Well, I, I have been pushing, um, yeah, I, I've been working very hard, diligently for, for months, really almost a year now, um, to help get the new leadership, which I think will, having new candidates and new leadership, the possibility of new leadership is energizing voters to get out. I've been pushing on social media, uh, encouraging our candidates who are um, running through Blue Reboot, who are running through Louisiana Blue Team. Um, I had a political consultant put together a graphic for me to, in, to endorse the candidates I felt that Lafayette should elect to, to um, leadership on our parish executive committee and um, no one literally can shut me up about this election anywhere I go and everywhere I go. So um, if I'm not sleeping or working, I'm talking about this election and, and this party. Okay. So. Does anyone have a question for Ms. Hurst? Yes, sir. Yes, what does uh, the members of the DSCC do for the constituents of Louisiana besides just voting for the leadership? Well, they're supposed to be helping candidates get elected. They're supposed to be working with their local Democratic Party. Um, they should be uh, working with their parish executive committee. Um, for example, the local parish executive committee, the last term of it, they reached out to me, being an attorney, asked um, if I would help with the bylaws which I help them do, um, and we should be working together, the DPEG and the DSCC, and most importantly, we should be supporting our candidates and, and helping look for viable candidates and uh, contributing to those candidates. Uh, if you have the money to contribute, uh, if you don't, the time, uh, if you have both, to do both. Uh, Unfortunately, we have a lot of DSCC members who are just checked out. We can't even get them to show up to our meetings, much less do anything to help candidates get elected. Uh, we've been struggling to get a quorum at most meetings, um, which is ridiculous because, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people have run to get a position to, you know, fill on their resume, but don't want to really do the work. And uh, I don't personally believe in that. I, I, if I can, anybody who knows me knows if I commit to something, I'm, I'm gonna commit to it all the way. Like, I don't know how to do anything halfway. But, um, so they're supposed to be doing all that party building at the local level, the state level. Um, that's what they're supposed to be doing. And that's who we should be electing, is people who are willing to do the work, mm -hmm. not just have the title. Mm -hmm. All right, Is there you. any other questions? Be it none, round of applause. Ms. Catherine Hurst. So for DSCC District uh, 43B, there is no candidate. For DSCC District 4345B, it is Mr. Paul Scott LeBlou. Is Mr. LeBlou here? He's not. Okay. So for DSCC District 48A, it's Beanie Bonan. And for District 48B, it is uh, David Levi. For DSCC District 49A, it's Anna Rodriguez. And for DSCC 49B, it is Kevin Donor, uh, Kevin Dorr. Okay, so none of those folks being here. I think it's about time that we come with some closing remarks. Um, I wasn't supposed to do these closing remarks, but um, I'm going to do them. <laughs> and uh, hmm, trying to really get a little something together here. Before I give the closing remarks, I would like to say something. Uh, to the DSCC and to DPEC, thank you. Thank you for choosing me to help moderate this. Um, these are trying times. And uh, 
I want to speak from my heart before I give these closing remarks that I wrote here. We got to be more human. We got to be more human. Um, left wing, right wing, they're all on the same bird. And we got to be more human. We've got to start asking ourselves, what would you do if this was your mother, this was your father, this was your brother, this was your sister, if this was your son or your daughter, and folk were constantly doing not what was right for the people, not what was right for them, but was for what they felt was for what was right for their pockets or for their party. I implore anybody who watches this or rewatch this, when are we going to do right by the people and make it not about party, pockets, or politics? So, know that your vote is your voice, and your voice has power. I can't tell you who to go vote for or how to vote, but I will say this. You need to all get engaged, get informed, get involved, go register, and go vote. Thank you candidates and voters for attending. We would like to invite as many Lafayette Parish voters, uh, if you have not already voted, to make your way to the MLK Center, located at 309 Core Street, to early vote as a group. There is power in unity. And maybe somewhere in my heart, that's what was really quelling, that we need real unity in the community and not a just cliche word because to me, it's not what you say, it's what you do. The polls close at 6 p.m. If you do not have a ride, one can be provided. Early voting runs from today until March 16th, including uh, tomorrow, hold on. No, no, it doesn't include tomorrow. Uh, it, it excludes tomorrow, which is March the 10th. Uh, thank you to uh, Jay Reagan, uh, the driving force behind this event. Take, thank you to my uh, timekeeper, Ms. Peggy, to uh, Don Mitchell for securing the location and making sure that this event was broadcast to Ms. Mary Pritchard for organizing and the assistance of uh, Amanda Anderson for, for, for monitoring, monitor, monitoring the Zoom. And thank you to GLASS and, and the UL Student Organization that promotes diversity and supports the LG BTQ plus community on campus. And to the future UL Collegiate Democratic Club for their support for this event. Any members of uh, these organizations and future members can stand up to be recognized right now if you'd like to. Being that they're none, a special thanks to Sam Walls, the president of Glass, and Jolie Daigle, and our partners in bringing up the College Democrats. Family, vote as if your life depends on it, because it does. I'll see you at the polls. We out. Peace. Thank you for moderating. Thank you. I didn't do too well today. This is one of my, because my heart was full of stuff. I'm like,